Good day, grade 10s. Welcome to this uh, next lesson in physical science. Um, I apologize if some of you came here expecting functions. Um, there was a bit of a mix up with the days. Um, but today is Thursday and therefore it is a science day. We are going to do exactly, I think it's one question on Oh, no, we're not. Um, I thought we had one question on electric circuits, but we're not. We've finished electric circuits, so we're moving on to transverse waves. And basically, what I want to do is, I'm just letting you now, know now, grade 10s, is over the weekend or so, I'm going to set up a an assessment for trans uh, for electricity and electric circuits. And I'm going to let you know it's happening. And what I'd like you guys to do is all go on to the assessment. I'll show you how to do it. And I want you to basically go and check to see how you could, if you can do all the different types of questions on the electric circuits, okay? We've done enough examples. If you're not sure about electric circuits, feel free to go and check them out on the recordings of the lessons. Okay, I've gone through lots and lots of examples. Now what I want to do is move on to waves. And the first thing we need to talk about with respect to transverse waves are pulses. But before we go on to that, I want to talk about the fact that there are two types of waves. There are transverse waves and there are longitudinal waves. And I'm really hoping that you guys have done enough science that you guys know that what? What is the only longitudinal wave that is out there that we know of? What is the only longitudinal wave? I'm really hoping that you guys are saying, well, the only longitudinal wave you guys know about is sound. Okay, I'm just trying to find my pen. It's gone missing. And the only longitudinal wave that you know about is sound. <sighs> okay, just a second. It's weird. Hang on a second. There it is. Aha. Okay, right. I apologize for the little glitch. Okay, so this we got transverse waves. Now transverse waves, a good way to for you guys to understand transverse waves, I mean are uh, to think of water waves. If you can think water waves, that's transverse waves, okay? Longitudinal waves are sound. Okay, sound. Now you need to understand that the only transverse, only longitudinal waves you guys are ever going to come across are sound. Transverse waves, the whole of the electromagnetic spectrum is a transverse wave. In other words, all your light, all your radiation, all your um, your radiation from your microwaves, your cell phones, your radios, all that, all of it is transverse waves. Okay, we use water as an example because it's visible and we can see it and it's easier to understand. But longitudinal waves, the only one we're talking about is sound. So the next couple of lessons, I'm going to talk mainly about, well, only about transverse waves, and then I'll move on to longitudinal waves after that. So don't despair, we will get to the longitudinal waves. Okay, so transverse waves are made up of pulses. So, this is the formal definition of a pulse. It says, a pulse is a single disturbance that moves through a medium. Okay, so let's talk about what a medium is. <laughs> a medium is a material or substance through which a pulse moves. Okay, in other words, the water would be an example of the material or substance that a water wave moves through, okay? Or it could be moving through air, okay? So it'd be moving through the air particles, or it could be moving along a string, okay? Like a guitar string or a violin string. The reason those things make noises and make music is because they are vibrating and they're vibrating in waves, okay? So pulse is a single disturbance, a single disturbance that moves through a medium. So I'm going to see if this will work. Otherwise, I'm just going to go to the website. Um, I want to go to this one here. Um, and let's insert it. There we go. <laughs> okay, so if you ever want to go and look for any type of simulation or type of thing to try and help you understand what's going on, I really suggest you go to this website, this PHET website. Okay. Um, 
for the simple reason that it has a whole bunch. Let me just, okay, now I'll go back next time. It gives a whole bunch of different types of animations that help you understand things like velocity graphs and velocity and acceleration, everything like that, okay? We will be doing that as well, but, but the point is that this will explain it to you, okay? And this website, it says FET, so if you want to, you can just Google this P-H-E-T, but it's by the University of Colorado in America, obviously. Okay, so what we've got here is we've got a fixed end, okay? And what we can do is we're going to just pull, make one pulse happen, okay? Just one pulse happen. So we're going to go pulse, okay? So do you see, okay, because this is fixed, there is a little bit of reflection. But do you see that what happens is, the definition of a pulse is that it's a single disturbance that moves along the medium. So every one of these little dots represents a point on the string. Okay, and you'll notice that they go in, um, I just wanna see what's going on here. They, I just wanna see if there's, oh, it is so down. You'll see that they go in a chain reaction. Okay, it's a bit pointy. And the reason it's pointy is because it's so slow. Okay, because if I had to isolate it, you would see it would actually form beautiful, beautiful S sine wave type curves. Okay, if you guys do maths or you have done maths, you must have done maths by now. And eventually it'll get to a standing wave, which we'll talk about later. So let's do slow motion. Okay, see so it goes up and then you can see the wave. Okay, let's just make it stop. Restart. Okay, let's go pulse and then restart and then go slow motion. Okay, let's go. You can see it go up and as it goes up the ball, do you see that it's being pushed over? So the, basically it's a chain reaction and all the little particles are moving up, okay? And now they're just wobbling in place because they're trying to get back to it. So this pulse is going up vertically. It's causing there to be motion and you can actually watch the motion of the wave. Now, what do you notice? You notice that the actual vibration is at 90 degrees, right? It is moving up and down. But which way is the wave moving? Do you see if the wave is actually moving in, in from left to right? Okay, so the disturbance in, in the material is vertical, right? But the disturbance in the thing is vertical, but the wave actually travels from left to right. Let's try again up and it goes from left to right okay do you understand that okay let's see what happens if we had a loose end if we had a loose end do you think there'd be any waves coming back let's have a look okay you see it goes up 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 and then it flattens down and yes there is a little bit of disturbance what about no end okay so it's going on to infinity it's going out the window okay so you go up and then you'll see that it carries on and there's no disturbance. It just goes flat down, okay? The only reason that we're getting that little bounce back is because there's a reflection. So now if we oscillate it, and remember we're doing this in slow motion, do you see that what's happening is that this is going up, you can actually follow it, and then it's going down, up, down, up, down. And if we had a fixed end, you would get to a point where it would look like the wave is not moving and it's called a standing wave. So we, we'll talk about standing waves again, but do you see, yeah, there we go. You get to a point where it doesn't actually look like the waves are moving at all. They're only moving from up, to, up and down. They're not moving from left to right. It's restarted and I'll see what you mean. See, there we can see it's moving from left to right. You can still see it moving from left to right and then we can see a bit of a bounce back and then it gets to a point where we can't actually see the particles moving from left to right. All we see is it moving up and down, up and down. And that is the point at which we're getting a standard wave. Okay, so as I was saying, University of Colorado, Boulder, you can just Google PHET for um, simulations. They've got hundreds of simulations. Just These are just a few of them that you can use in this way by inserting it into a PowerPoint. So I would seriously suggest, and it sounds ridiculous, guys, but just look for example. Okay, I'm just going to quickly give you an example of if you are struggling with, um, I don't know, graphing lines then you can go and have a look. I know we're supposed to be talking about this, but 
I actually find that a lot of my students, once I told them about this website, that they actually learned a lot, went along and played. OK, so they talk about so you actually learn about slopes and things. So they show you how to work out your slope, etc, cetera, etc, cetera, and etc. So this is just a silly example of what all you can learn through this website. Um, so just putting it out there and it's got way more technical stuff other than your M equals dot. I mean your M is dot Y dot X as well. Um, if you look over here, you've got resistance in a Y, etc. So there's lots of other options. OK, but moving on. So let me go on to the next page. Now, the hump that was made in the slinky is called a transverse pulse. Remember I said to you that if you, when you looked at the wave going across from left to right, you could see it going up and then down and then up and then down, okay? And, oh dear. And as it was going up and down and up and down, the wave was moving from left to right, but it was actually we could see that the pulse was moving from left to right, or the disturbance, okay? That hump is called a transverse pulse, and the reason it's called a transverse pulse is because the disturbance is at right angles to the direction of motion. Okay, so the definition of a transverse wave, and yes, you do need to learn this, is that all the particles disturb move at right angles to the direction of the pulse. So the pulse is moving from this side to that side. Okay, it was moving. Remember that the stick went up and it caused this to go up and then it went down and went through like this. Okay, so the pulse is actually moving from left to right, but the disturbance, the disturbance in the water or the string in this case, is at 90 degrees the direction and therefore this is a transverse wave. So, let's just talk about definitions. So, an amplitude, okay, is a maximum disturbance or distance the medium is displaced from its rest position. So, its rest position is where it would be if we didn't mess with it, if we didn't put a pulse through it, okay? The pulse length is obviously from A to B. It's the distance from the beginning to the end of the pulse is the pulse length. And please note this bit here, from, the, from this line here where there is zero disturbance, this is called the line of zero disturbance. So what, what is that? That is, if we didn't have a pulse going through it and it was just flat, that would be the line of zero disturbance, okay? The amplitude, like I said, is a maximum disturbance or distance the medium is displaced from its rest position. So now, now that we've spoken about pulses, we need to talk about superposition of pulses. So superposition kind of, of waves, kind of gives you away the name, okay? Because superposition means what? Position, superposition means on top of, on top of, okay? We're gonna place waves on top of each other and we're gonna see what happens. So we need to first learn the definitions and I'm going to go through them with you. And guys, I'm serious about this. You really, really need to learn your definitions. The better you know your definitions, the better you can explain things. Now, it's kind of tricky because in the exams, they could either say to you define or they could say write in your own words. And if you then give the definition, you're going to get it wrong. Or if you write it in your own words and they ask the definition, then you're you're going to get it wrong as well. Okay, so please make sure you learn these per 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 perfectly, but then also make sure you understand them so you can explain it back in normal words, okay? So, the principle of superposition states that when two disturbances occupy the same space at the same time, the resulting disturbance is the sum of the two disturbances. Okay, so it states when the two disturbances occupy the same space at the same time, the resulting disturbance is the sum of the two disturbances, okay? In other words, when they cover each other, when they move over each other, move into the same space. Okay, constructive interference is when, is when, when the two pulses meet, they end up in a bigger pulse, and destructive interference is when, when the two pulses meet, they end up in a smaller pulse. Okay, so do you agree the constructive interference and destructive interference there's no, really way, no real way of rewording it, but the principle of supervision, superposition could be reworded in the sense that if you've got two waves meeting, okay, the amplitude of the wave, 
as they meet is equal to the sum of the amplitude to the other two waves. Okay, so I've got this little video um, that we can watch that talks about the principle of superposition. So they start off by saying, when two or more waves travel through the same medium simultaneously, the resultant displacement of any point in the, is a vector sum of the displacement due to the individual waves. Okay, so let's get started with this. So what do they say? They say when two or more waves travel through the same medium simultaneously. So what they've done is they've dropped two pins in some water. And you'll get one amplitude from the one pin, and you'll get a second amplitude from the second pin, right? So what are they showing you here? Just let me show you. Pause. They're saying this bit here is the amplitude of the wave caused by the first pin, okay? This is the amplitude of the wave caused by the second pin. And because they're both positive, if you want to think about it this way, say let's pretend that that is zero, and they're both in the same direction. If they're both in the same direction, do you agree that that is going to add to that and then you end up with a bigger resultant? Okay. Similarly, you can see that Y1 and Y2 are also in the same direction, so they're going to become additive and that it's going to be a bigger dip as well. Okay. So the resultant is R1 plus R2. Okay, so they're going to take Y1 plus Y2 at this point, and that will give us a resultant there. And they're going to go Y1 plus Y2, and you'll notice it's lower there as well. So if we added up these two, we'd end up with a resistance, I mean, with a, sorry, resultant amplitude up there. And if we added one, one, Y1, Y2, yeah, then you ended up with a big resultant at the bottom, okay? Now... Now look what happens. Oh, this is doing it again. Mm. Let's see if I can get this right. Okay. Okay. So now you can see that the two waves are adding up, okay? Yeah, y1 equals y2, which equals y, okay? You've got a crest and a crest that are now going to add together. And you will therefore see that you get a maximum displacement. If, if you get a crest and a trough, what's going to happen? They're actually going to cancel each other out, and we're going to end up with a minimum displacement. So maximum displacement is when you've got constructive interference, and minimum displacement is when you've got destructive interference. So you can see here, yeah, we've got the trough of the one graph and the crest of the other graph, okay? And if you want to think about it, there's your zero line, right? So that means that this, and you'll see that it's slightly higher, this way, slightly down, because one of these graphs is actually slightly more dominant than the other, okay? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if we add something that goes, looks like this to something that looks like that, and we say that this is one meter, and we said that is two meters, we're still going to end up with the sum of the two um, with the two waves. So there is amplitude of two waves. So it's what is it? It's one and two down. So it's going to be end up with one down, right? And you can even think of it as doing vectors because it is displacement. If we choose down as positive, okay, then do you agree that this would be a minus? So we go two plus minus one, which is going to be two minus one, which equals one. Ta da! Okay, and because it's positive, we know it's in the downward direction. Okay, um, and that's it. So, exactly what we were just talking about now. If pulses move towards each other, okay, and they're in the same, on the same side of the zero line, okay, then you get constructive interference. So, what means that they are going to end up with this amplitude being double that amplitude. This amplitude is double that amplitude, okay, if they are the same size. But let's put it this way. If this is X and this is Y, 
then this whole height here is going to be x plus y. But what's important you need to realize is that these waves then carry on in their own way, whichever way they're going. They just pass through each other. So when they pass through each other, um, when they pass through each other, I'm like, um, <laughs> they, you can, they're going to pass through each other. So what happens is this one now is going to have a height of y, and this one here is going to have a height of x, okay? Because they are moving in the opposite directions. They go past each other. Now, this is exactly the same thing, okay? So don't freak out just because it's in the bottom half. This is still constructive interference because the amplitude's on the same side. So this is what we call a crest plus a crest. And this is called a trough plus a trough. Okay, crest and a crest and a trough and a trough. So now again, if I call this, it doesn't really matter, let's call this distance A and this distance B. Because they're on the same side and it's a crest and a crest and a trough and trough, what's going to happen? We're going to end up with constructive interference. So this year, this is going to be A plus B. And remember what I said to you, they move through each other. So then this dude here, actually is that one that just moved through. So this is B and this now is A. Okay, now let's look at this. Okay, this side was constructive interference, constructive. And this side is going to be destructive, destructive interference. Okay, so yeah, we've got a crest and we've got a trough. Okay. And in this case, the crest and the trough are identical in size. So we could say that this is one meter long and that is also one meter long. Mm, sorry, one meter long. So what happens is as they pass each other, the one meter, remember that this is the same as adding a vector. So what would happen is we choose down as positive, right? That means that up is negative. So therefore the sum of that crest, the distance is the displacement is going to be the displacement is the displacement of the crest plus the displacement of the trough. We've chosen the displacement of the trough as positive, right? So it's going to be D is going to be minus one plus one, which equals zero. Okay, so that just shows you how you get that. Okay, so therefore this dotted line doesn't exist and you're getting a beautiful flat line. And that is again, destructive interference. Okay, and then again, uh, they pass each other. So if this was trough A, this is now going to be trough A. And if this is crest B, this is now going to be crest B. They pass it through each other. Yeah, you can see it's exactly the same thing, but what's different? Yeah. Our crest is a lot bigger than our trough. So let's call this 2x and this one x. Okay, just for fun. So the amplitude of this trough, okay, I mean this crest is 2x, whereas the amplitude of the trough is x. So when they interact, what is going to happen? You can again do the sum. And the sum is going to show us that you end up with more of a crest than a trough. Let's just show you. Let's set that equal two centimeters just to show you and this equal one centimeter. Okay. And again, this time I'm going to choose up as positive. Okay. So you I'm writing down the bottom left here. I'm going to say, okay, fine. So the total displacement is going to be the displacement of the crest plus the displacement of the trough. The displacement of the crest is two centimeters. Okay, plus, because I chose that as positive, plus minus one, because that's in the opposite direction, so it's negative. So it ends up that I have, oh, I'm so sorry. Ends up that I have a, we'll just write here. Ends up with a one centimeter, and that's in the direction of the crest, because it's positive. And that's what we get. But note, yeah, yeah, again, it carries on as they pass through each other, and this gap carries on in that direction. Okay, so waves, even though they're, inter and it's called interference for a reason, they're interfering with each other, but then they're carrying on. Okay, there is a little bit of energy loss, but you guys don't have to worry about that. Okay, 
Right, so now from pulses, we can actually move on to waves. So we said that a pulse was a single disturbance, right? So what you need to understand is that there's a wave, a wave is a periodic continuous disturbance that consists of a train of pulses, okay? In other words, the definition of a pulse is a single disturbance that moves through a wave, right? A wave is basically a rep rep repetition of that pulse, okay? It is periodic, which means that it happens in a specific period. And it's the same. When I say periodic, I don't mean, there are two ways that you can think of periodic. You can go, oh, it's down and again. When they're talking about periodic, they mean that it happens at a specific period. So it keeps going, okay? And it's a continuous disturbance. So it, it happens non-stop. That consists of a train of pulses. So, in other words, if I just go back, hang on a minute. I'll show you quickly. Won't take long, I don't think. Ooh, there we go. Let's go back here. There we go. Okay, if I oscillate this, hang on, let's make it a loose no end, and then I oscillate it. That's a wave. It's continuous repetition of pulse. Okay, watch pulse one. It's just one. Dudush. Okay, there's my pulse. A wave is regular repetitive pulses. They keep going at the same time over and over again. It's continuous, doesn't stop. That is a wave. Okay. So admittedly, when we talk about waves in when you're talking about like if you go surfing and you're talking about waves, they aren't they are waves because they transverse and they move along and everything else. But I wonder if I can use this now. Um I was past that. Where was I? Past that. Excellent. Okay. So basically a transverse wave is a wave where the movement of the particles in the medium is perpendicular to the direction of the propagation of waves. So like I've said in this section, we're only talking transverse waves, only transverse waves. So what did we say? We said that the particles are moving at 90 degrees to the direction of the wave. The wave is actually moving from left to right, but the particles are moving from up and down. But they like using the word propagation which means that it's the direction that the wave was started in. Okay, so you need to learn, guys, seriously, you need to learn this definition. It's a very important definition, okay? A transverse wave is a wave where the movement of the particles in the medium is perpendicular direction of the wave. Okay, so let's talk some more about these things. So you need to know these definitions again, and unfortunately, it's actually quite an easy section as waves and fun waves and transverse waves and everything else, except that you need to learn your definitions. Okay, so <laughs> let's get through it. A crest is a point on the wave where the displacement of the medium is at a maximum. So that is it. The displacement is a maximum. In other words, the crest is the point where we would measure the amplitude. Okay, do you understand that? Because that is the maximum displacement. So the crest is a point in the wave where the displacement of the medium is at a maximum. A point on the wave is a trough if the displacement of the medium is at a minimum. Okay, so admittedly it depends which way you're looking at it, but if the top is a crest, the bottom is going to be a, a trough. Okay, that's how we work it. So crest is at the top, maximum displacement, and the bottom is a trough. Now let's talk about amplitude, and we've already kind of defined it, but now we need to make sure you guys do know it. The amplitude of a wave is the maximum disturbance or displacement of the medium from the equilibrium position. And that there is the equilibrium position. You can also say from the line of zero disturbance. That would be acceptable as well. Okay. So that is from the line of zero disturbance. So in this case, we actually have got two amplitudes, and this is something that a lot of my students struggle with, is that they think that it's the maximum distance from the top of the crest to the top of the bottom of the trough is the amplitude. No, the amplitude is from the line of zero disturbance to either the top of the crest or the bottom of the trough, okay? And for you guys, this should always be the same distance. Okay, so now we need to talk about 
points in phase, okay? So we're going to define this, but what I want you to realize is that, and you need to look very carefully, is that you've got, here is a little red line, there's a little red dot, there's a red dot, there's a red dot, okay? That there is a wavelength, but we'll talk about wavelengths in a minute. And I just want to see something. Um, Okay, there we go. Okay, so what this is going to show us is the fact about um, about wavelengths, okay? So it says here in the simulation, pick two points on the wavelength with a whole wavelength apart and look at how the oscillations compare. So a wavelength, a good way to measure wavelength is to go from the top of the crest to the top of the crest, okay? So just watch what happens, okay? So if you watch, Wavelength. Do you see that those particles keep moving? Okay, and there's another one with the crest. Okay, and there you go again. I wonder if I can draw on this. Oh no. Oh, okay, let's try again. So start again. I'm going to draw on it. So, <laughs> so yeah, you got the wavelength. Okay, and you can see that they've decided that that's wavelength. Now watch the particles as they move between these. Okay. It says two points a whole wavelength apart move in exactly the same way. They are in phase with each other. Okay, so that there is what's happening is that you've got two points that are in phase with each other. And I just want to restart it because I want to draw on it. Okay, so now if we want to draw on this, get a pen. Okay, what I've the way I explain this to my grade tens is this. I want you to imagine that this is a water wave. Okay, right, so this is a water wave. And um, we're going to assume that I can draw a duck. <laughs> we're going to assume that you've got a little duck here. Okay. And yes, there's his head and there's the feet. And let's say there's a little duck here. Okay, there's a little duck here. And there's his head and there's his feet and there's a little duck here. Okay. Now at any specific time, what is happening to these ducks? Okay, this wave is going up and down, up and down, up and up, up and down. Okay, so if we had to watch the, this point here, this duck at this point, what is going to happen to him? Do you agree he's going to go straight up? Okay, he's going up because he was on that part of the wave. The wave is moving from left to right and he's on the upward bound part, whereas this little duck here, this little dude here is going down. And at, for an instant, for a tiny, tiny instant, this little duck is going from left to right until he starts going down again, okay? So what are two points in the phase? Two points in phase are two ducks that are traveling at exactly the same way at exactly the same time. So in other words, if there's a duck over here, and we'll call him duck A, and this is a duck B here, okay? And they are both traveling at exactly the same direction at exactly the same time. Then we say that these two points are in phase. And the reason that they talk about the wavelength is because a wavelength is defined, and we'll talk about this in the next page as well, is defined as the distance between two consecutive points in phase. What do I mean by two consecutive points in phase? Okay, let me just erase the stuff, the ducks. Okay, let's pretend that I never drew the ducks. Okay, and let's say I've got points on this, on this wave. Okay, so I'm going to mark off points on this wave and I'm numbered in red as well. Let's call this point A and I'm going to call this point B and that point C, that point D and we'll just call this point here point E. Okay, now if I said to you that I want you to label all the forces or name all the forces that are, I mean, all the points that are in phase, all the points that are in phase, then what would you do? Do you agree that you go, well, let me think about this. If this is a duck, he'd be going straight up. If this is a duck, he'd be going a little bit left, I mean, to the right. This duck is moving down. This duck is moving up again. And this duck is moving up. So do we agree that points A, D, and E 
are in phase. They are perfectly in phase. And if I drew this perfectly, which I'm afraid I didn't do, you could actually draw a straight horizontal line through those points, okay? So I apologize that my rulers, my line is not that straight. Okay, now they are perfectly in phase, but a wavelength is defined as between two consecutive points. That is two points that are right after each other, okay, right after each other. So they one, oh, let's write this like this, one after the other, okay? So do you agree that A from A to D, there's actually, yeah, there's another point that also would be cover this B in phase with it, okay? So therefore A to D is not a wavelength, it's actually two wavelengths, but D to E, is a wavelength. Now admittedly, the way that people do it is they tend to go from crest to crest or trough to trough, simply because it's easier to try and identify the top of the crest and the top of the crest to the top of the trough to the top of the trough, than to try and choose some random point in the middle of a wave, okay? But that's the only reason they choose the crests and the troughs. Could be any two consecutive points in phase. So, Again, now let's look at this diagram, okay? And we're going to talk about points in phase again. So let's just choose colors, okay? So we've got A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, and that's a J. So let's talk about which points are in phase, okay? First of all, do you agree that A and F are definitely in phase because this is going up and this is going up? If it was moving from left to right, if the wave was moving from left to right, they both begin up. If the wave was moving from right to left, they would both be going down. Okay, so we're saying the wave is moving from left to right. So do you agree that two of the points that are in phase are A and F? What about B and G? Yes, they are both in phase. This dude is going up. And they go down and they come up again. So G is definitely in phase as well. So you go B and G are two points in phase. C and H, yes, they're both going up across. Okay. I, D and I. And then finally E and J. Okay. So do you see that that there is one wavelength? This is one wavelength. That is one wavelength, that is one wavelength, and similarly, that's one wavelength, okay? But what is the problem with that? Like I said, the problem with that is that it is very difficult to find that point and that point on a wave. It is much easier to find that point and that point on a wave and measure it. And then you can say, oh, well, that there is a wavelength. So the definition of a wavelength is a wavelength is of the wavelength of a wave is a distance between any two adjacent, which means next to, okay, adjacent points that are in phase, or you could say two consecutive, two consecutive points in phase. Okay, so now we need to talk about period and frequency. Okay, now I want you to think about the fact that you are on holiday, right? And you're at the beach and you're sitting on a rock. And yes, you're sitting on the rock and the water is coming in. Okay, there's, I don't know what's going on with your legs. Okay, but you're cool, you got sunglasses. Okay, maybe not. Anyway, so you're sitting on this rock and the water is coming in. Now, there are bigger waves coming along. Whee! Okay, and they're coming along. Now, if you decide to measure the time it takes from the first wave to hit you, do you just, the waves are splashing on you, you don't care, you love it, okay? So say you decide, okay, fine, this is awesome. I'm going to measure the time it takes, how much time it is between each wave hitting me. So as this wave gets to you, as that wave gets to you, it's out we splash, okay? You say one, and you start counting. And you eventually count until, I don't know, 10 seconds. And then suddenly, there's another wave, splash, okay? That 10 seconds is a time between two successive crests or troughs. And that is the period of the wave. So the period is the time taken between two successive crests or troughs to pass a specific point. Okay, if we go back quickly for a second, 
I'm going to just erase all this writing if I can find my mouse again. What is it with this mouse today? Control. There it is. Okay. Um, erase link. Okay. We're going to watch this for a second. And wait a before we watch it, before we watch it, let me just draw a line. Okay. Now, what I want you to do is watch how long it takes for one full wavelength to pass that point. Okay. So here we go. As it goes, there is basic blue line. So there it goes. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi. Okay, so it's about four Mississippis, which means it's about four seconds. Okay, so therefore we can say that the period of this wave is about four seconds. Okay, I'm not that accurate with my Mississippis, but you get it. So the period is the time taken for two successive crests or troughs to pass a specific point, okay? And the period is obviously, because it's time, it's got a big symbol T, that's a symbol. Okay, it's very original. And what is the unit? The unit is obviously seconds um, or S. Now, grade tens, I really want to remind you again that you don't write this. This is not um, applicable. In fact, I have a lot of co-teachers that say, very sadly, there is no sex in physics, okay? No sex. It's seconds or S, okay? If you're not sure about the S or the abbreviation, write out the whole word because you're going to lose marks if you write this, okay? And I don't care if American textbooks write it like this. They're wrong. No, they're not wrong, but they're not right in our curriculum. So you need to write it like this, okay? Now, what is frequency? Let's say again, going back to our analogy of you sitting on the on the on the on the rock, okay? And instead of counting how long it took between the um, the wave crests hitting you, this time you thought, okay, fine. Let's see how many wave crests hit me in one minute, okay? So then I count and I go, well, that was one, okay? And then a little bit later, within the same minute, that was two. So do you agree that as far as I was concerned, I had two waves hit me in one minute. Okay, so do you agree that's kind of a rate? We're saying how often does something happen? Okay, so frequency is a number of successive crests passing a given point in one second. So not one minute, okay, admittedly I was doing one minute because obviously these would be waves passing you, whereas in normal waves that we're doing, you actually need to talk about one second. So frequency, okay, is the number of successive crests or troughs passing a given point in one second. Now frequency is interesting because obviously the symbol for frequency is an F, okay, little F, please note, little F, because the big F is four, say. So little f is frequency. It is measured in hertz after Mr. Hertz, but not as in the car rental place. And you can take this down to HZ. That oh, that's the symbol for it, okay? And frequency and period are inversely proportional. So, so frequency equals one over period, or period is equal to one over frequency. So frequency is one over period or period is one over frequency. So let's do one example. I'm kind of running out of time. I'll tell you what, we're going to start this, these examples, because it'll give me an opportunity to remind you what we're doing. So we'll start this example and carry on with this on our next lesson on physical science, which is on Tuesday. Right, I hope you had a good lesson um, and thank you for joining me and have a great day. Cheers.